We're good. Okay. So uh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're going to talk about homeopathic remedies for sleep. So you gave me a great introduction. I want to give you just a little bit more. So um, I'm almost a native to Arizona, and I'm sure the natives are like, you're not a native if almost is not native. But I've been here since I was seven. And I absolutely love Arizona. I grew up in South Scottsdale, and I went to um, Coronado High School. I went to Arizona State University. Um, and forgive me, I get a little nervous myself talk, talking, talking about myself, so I apologize for that. So um, I had some really life-changing events that led me towards naturopathic medicine. And I had two aunts pass away really close to each other. They died six months apart from each other. And it really changed the course of my life. I um, found out life was just really short. And I was working for my parents at the time, and I knew I needed to do something different. I really enjoyed working for them, but it wasn't, um, my, wasn't my passion. So one of my aunts passed away from uh, um, ovarian cancer. And when I was uh, researching how do I become a, a good support for someone with um, cancer, I stumbled upon how cancer is so preventable and that most cancers, 90, you know, sometimes upwards of 90% of cancers are um, preventable. And I thought, how is this not being shouted from the hills? How are we not um, every moment of every second of every day telling people we need to eat better, sleep better, manage stress, worry about the things that are in our environment? And so, um, I knew I needed a change, so I thought, well, whatever it is going to be, I know I'm going to need to go back to school. I had gone and got an, a degree in political science. I thought I would become a, um, like a lobbyist of some sort and um, always passionate about things. And so I went and I went onto ASU's website and I looked up their nutrition degrees. And one of their nutrition degrees said that most of the students go on to medical school and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to become a physician, but I'm going to become a different type of physician. I am going to educate my patients and I'm going to spend time with them and, and just be a different kind of doctor. And so in my search of, of medical schools in Arizona, I found the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. I didn't even know that naturopathic medicine existed. I had no idea what it was. They had an open house a few weeks after I found them. I went, I fell in love with the school. I fell in love with the philosophies and the medicine. And then it took me, excuse me, about three years to get into school. So I had to go back. Uh, go back and get some prerequisites and I went to Arizona State University again and I got my bachelor's in nutrition and that has helped me immensely in my work. Um, it is the foundation of, of a lot of what I do and uh, so that I went to the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Tempe and it's a four-year uh, medical school. It was amazing. I learned so much. I uh, when you uh, graduate you, and you pass your boards, you become a licensed primary care physician. So in the state of Arizona, licensed primary care, although I don't do a lot of primary care, I, I primarily manage a lot of chronic illnesses, but I can write prescriptions and order labs and imaging. Um, but I, but people don't really come to me for that. They go to their primary care for that. Um, but, uh, you know, if they're looking for prescriptions and things like that, but I use a lot of, um, botanical medicines and, um, energetic medicines, which homeopathy is considered an energetic medicine. I do acupuncture, of course, nutritional counseling. Um, and, and we work on a lot of lifestyle changes that need to be made to bring, to bring about health. Um, so I graduated from the Southwest College in 2014, and I started On Being Well in 2015. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm a mom to a blended family of five, and um, our oldest is 24, and her name is Erin, and she's getting married in February, and she is a small business does horse riding lessons and she's starting her master's so she can do equine therapy so horse therapy uh for children that 
struggle with anxiety and depression and, and trauma. And Allie is the, our next one down. She's 20 and she is a senior at um, Grand Canyon and she will um, be working on uh, Christian family counseling. Uh, Georgia is also 20. She's at ASU and she is uh, a political science major. Jason, my son is 15 and uh, he's a pretty typical 15 year old boy. And then Macy is my youngest and she um, is my artist and definitely gives me a run for my money. And um, something personal about me is um, my husband and I had a passion project in Chandler, Arizona, and I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard of it, but it is called Grace Farms. It was called Grace Farms. We closed it um, due to COVID. And again, it was just a passion project. It was um, an old abandoned nursery off of uh, Chandler Heights and Gilbert Road. And uh, we used to host events and we would uh, bring people from the community. We'd, uh, uh, we'd highlight the importance of healthy, uh, clean, safe, uh, but local foods. And so we would have a farm to table uh, dinner experience, but it was fine dining. So it oftentimes would be like a four to, four, four to six course meal out in this um, beautiful old abandoned nursery. And so we're hoping that someday we'll have a Grace Farms uh, 2.0. So that is me, just give you a little insight about myself. So let's move on to the topic um, at hand. And so just we'll just go over a little bit of background before we get into homeopathy and then some of the remedies for homeopathy. If I have any um, uh, very uh, seasoned homeopaths, um, uh, with us tonight, you'll you'll know that my talk is very uh, very on the surface level of homeopathy, so we won't go into all the ins and outs, but we'll get the gist of it, and then I'll give you some resources if you're not familiar with homeopathy where you can uh, uh, dive deeper. So we're going to talk about sleep, poor sleep. So common reasons for poor sleep pain is a very common one. Um, things that come to mind, uh, lower back pain, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, it's so hard to sleep sometimes if you're uh, afflicted with rheumatoid arthritis, stress. Um, uh, so uh, like talking about mo mom somnia, um, having your kiddos home and trying to keep them engaged on the computer all day uh, is a very stressful event. But just being a human, um, that it, it's, it's very difficult to be a person. It's very difficult to be a person in this present moment in time. So stress is a very common reason for poor sleep, anxiety. Again, this is a this is a high anxiety time, but you may have had anxiety prior uh, to COVID, and COVID definitely did not make anyone's anxiety better. We also uh, sadness and grief can be reasons for for poor sleep, and um, oftentimes I see loss of purpose be a reason for poor sleep, and. Um, there's times where we have changes. Maybe our kids leave the house. Um, we uh, retire. Um, we've lost a spouse, whether they've, they have left this earth, earth or they have left us. Um, the, you know, if we need to regroup and find out, well, what are we doing? What, 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 what do I want to do now? That could be a really common reason for poor sleep. Stimulants, lots of soda, lots of caffeine, coffees, specialty drinks, um, and overeating too, uh, too late in the day can, can cause some poor sleep. And of course, there's other medical reasons, but these are just some common ones. So common patterns that we see of poor sleep, hard to fall asleep, hard to stay asleep, sleeping very lightly, you just never really get into that deep restorative sleep. And then you wait, maybe you wake early, maybe you wake at four and you don't need to be up till seven or you wake up at five, but you just, just waking early and then can't go back to bed. So some of my favorite ways to improve sleep are listed below and I'll just go over them briefly. So, um, not all of us know if caffeine affects us. So just make sure that you're not having caffeine past noon. Well, uh, this might be something you can use um, for the mom somnia uh, t tomorrow, is dimming the lights in the house as the sun goes down. It's a, it's a, like a, a um, subconscious cue that you um, need to, uh, and it's good for the kids too, because it lets them 
no, like lets their little brains know, okay, sun is going down. So it's time to take that serotonin and convert it into melatonin. And when we don't have those bright lights and we're turning them down, that is the cue for the brain to turn that serotonin into melatonin. So dimming the lights as the sun goes down. Now these aren't just miracles. Like you don't just dim the lights and then one that night and then all of a sudden you fall asleep. It's, it's, it's establishing some routines and some habits. I like people to diffuse essential oils, calming essential oils. So lavender is a very popular one. Um, there are blends that you can get. So you, when you look for them, you'll look for things that say calming, soothing, nighttime. And we wanna avoid essential oils that are uplifting like our citrus or maybe peppermint. So we want things that are very calming. So you can diffuse the essential oils while maybe you're reading or watching your show or near your bed. Epsom salt baths. If you're not a believer in Epsom salt baths or you're too busy for Epsom salt baths, you need an Epsom salt bath, especially if you're a poor sleeper. Epsom salt baths are amazing. We use two cups of salt per bath, soak for 20 minutes. Um, try to do it as often as you can um, in the beginning, um, and, and, and like say for a couple weeks, and then you can lower the min amount of times that you do this treatment. But Epsom salt baths are the least expensive, easiest way I know of, of getting someone from a very sympathetic state, so that fight or flight state, down, get, get out of that and into a parasympathetic state, that more rest and digest. So if you're a very busy person and you're very keyed up, and you don't have time for a bath, that bath is the best thing for you. I like castor oil and tiger balm for pain. Castor oil topically, not internally. Maybe some of you had experienced using some castor oil um, uh, to encourage a bowel movement in the past. So we only use castor oil topically um, here. And so if you have an achy joint, you got frozen so shoulder or you know, stiff, stiff neck, or maybe your joints are hurting from your arthritis, your rheumatoid arthritis, or maybe you just had surgery and you've been cleared to, to apply something onto your, to the area that's been treated. Castor oil is, is amazing. Castor oil is non-toxic. It's very inexpensive. It's easy to find sprouts, whole foods, places like that. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's a pain reliever, and it increases circulation. Again, use it, the more you use it, it's a summation, and it will work better over time. I love journaling, although lots of us don't do it because it's time consuming, it's one other thing to do, but if you're a person with thoughts that go round and round, and you're constantly thinking about stuff, what to do, you, it would be good for you to journal, get out your to-do list, uh, and uh, get those things out of your brain before you, you hop into bed. Prayer and meditation are always uh, an amazing way to improve your sleep. Again, it's not right in the moment, right? It's not just this pill that you take and then all of a sudden you're, you're asleep. It's things that you do day to day. It's the consistency that compounds. Um, uh, if, you're, if your mind goes lots of places, do a guided meditation, do a guided prayer, and those, those, that can help you. Most of the time in my practice, I see sleep problems as more heart problems, not our physical heart, but our, our, our soul heart, our, our spiritual heart. And so there are things that sometimes we just need to talk through with someone. Um, it could be a trauma you have had or a betrayal or, um, you know, it's a transit, it's a transition in life. You just need to talk to somebody and that, and that is okay. If you're not ready for a counselor, maybe a life coach, uh, sometimes that, that can feel less intimidating than counseling. In my office, I like to use Bach remedies. Bach remedies is a whole subject in itself. So maybe sometime we can get to know Bach remedies. So if you like homeopathy, you'll really like Bach remedies. Um, and of course, I use homeopathy uh, to help with sleep and acupuncture. So we're going to get into what is homeopathy. So homeopathy is its own system of medicine. It is, um, so there are homeopaths, and I'm a naturopath who happens to use homeopathy. So homeopathy is a, is a system, a series of remedies, and there's a little over 4,000 remedies. 
and they usually come in a, like a little tube like this. So this is kind of the, the newer way to give somebody homeopathy, but they might, might like this uh, more, you know, 20, 30 years ago in a glass vial. But the, the theories behind homeopathy, well, they're, they're natural substances. They're made out of minerals, plants, metals, elements. There are other remedies that are made out of other things, but in general, um, it's minerals, plants, metals, and elements. So there's two notions about what homeopathy is. One is the law of similars, and the other one is the law of the minimum dose. And so the law of similars is also means like cures like. So that's a little bit confusing. So we'll go over that a little bit, and we'll see that see see this more um, in a in a common remedy that we're going to talk about for sleep in just a second. And so like cures like is a notion that a disease can be cured by a substance that produces similar symptoms and healthy people. So for example, if you have a cold and you have runny, runny eyes, runny nose, um, and your eyes are burning, and we wanted to use homeopathy to treat your cold, we would want to use something that, uh, a, a remedy that produced that something similar in a healthy person. So onion, when you're chopping an onion, oftentimes it will make your eyes water and your eyes burn and it may make your nose run. And in homeopathy, onion is uh, called by uh, its botanical or Latin name, it's called Allium sepa. And so we might use prescribed Allium sepa for a cold or for allergies. So that's like cures like. Uh, lot, and we won't go too far into the ins and outs of homeopathy because uh, we'll want to get on to some fun stuff and talk about the remedies. Um, law of the minimum dose. And so that is the notion that the lower the dose of the medication, the greater its effectiveness is. And so that is something different, we think, sometimes from Western medicine um, or sometimes just Western, like more is better. Here it is a very, very minimal dose that can create huge change. And so in these remedies, there is a very, very, very small amount of, so a small amount of allium sepa can bring about great change. So is homeopathy for everyone? Um, yes and no. So, um, I th for most people, yes, but there are a few times when I think, you know what, you probably shouldn't self-prescribe, you should go to a homeopath. So we're going to talk about some things that for everyday people that really aren't, you know, it's just occasional insomnia, we don't have a really a lot of other things going on, you try to self-prescribe, see if you can get some homeopathy to work for you. Why? Because it's safe. We can use homeopathy in children, we can use them uh, with pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and you can hardly use anything in those populations. Um, even our, even herbs, we just, we just don't know the safety of them. Homeopathy, there are no known contradictions um, in, using, in using homeopathy. And I absolutely love that, especially with polypharmacy. So sometimes I'll get someone to come in, they come in the office and they're on 20 different medications. And you're like, hmm, well, I, Okay, we're gonna have a lot of lot of um, a lot of interaction. So I always know that I can use my energetic medicine, my safe medicine, like acupuncture and homeopathy, uh, with these folks, and I know that I'm not going to hurt them. Acupuncture can be used for pets too. It's very affordable, and um, something like this over at Sprouts might cost you somewhere between eight and twelve dollars for a month supply. So it's it's very affordable and um, it's easy to find. It's over the counter in certain potencies. So the lower dose potencies, the smaller potencies um, are over the counter. And then uh, when you get into the higher dose potencies, you do have to have, um, have a prescription generally um, or be a physician to order it. Um, and again, it's regulated by the FDA. So who should not self-prescribe? So if you have a really, if you're really ill and you have complex illness, I would say 
go to a homeopath or go to a naturopath or a functional medicine doc or somebody that knows how to prescribe homeopathy. And then also severely mentally ill people should not self-prescribe and, and, and uh, someone who's not familiar with homeopathy should not try to prescribe for them because they can actually aggravate with uh, homeopathic remedies. So uh, severe mental illness is, um, you know, severe depression, suicidal thoughts, auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, um, uh, uh, bipolar, and you want to not prescribe for yourself or a family member, but for other things like cold, aches and pains, insomnia, you can feel comfortable trying this. So we're going to hop into, um, or almost to our remedies. Okay, so how to take homeopathy. So for acute illnesses, we would take um, three to five pellets underneath the tongue and you let it dissolve. So you don't bite it, chew it, or swallow it. And um, we typically, when it's an acute illness, say like you have a cold, you can take it two to four times per day. If we have a chronic illness, we would take three to five pellets underneath the tongue and let it dissolve. Again, don't bite, chew, or swallow, just let it dissolve. For chronic illness, we might take it once per day. So if you had acute insomnia, you might take it, let's say you have trouble uh, staying asleep. No problem going to sleep, but you have trouble staying asleep. So you might be able to take it before you go to bed and then in the middle of the night when you wake up. Chronic illness, maybe something you've been working on three to six months or longer, you can just take that once per day. When you're taking homeopathy, this is the homeopathic remedy, um, you flip it up, there's a little cap that comes off, and for these, you just twist the cap, the little cap pellets fall into the cap, you pull off the cap, and you use the cap to dispense the pellets don't uh, touch the pellets. It's just a nuance of the medication. I can't tell you how many times a patient has come to me and they've broken this apart because they couldn't figure out how to dispense the pellets. So that's why I thought I would, I would show you just to save you the grief uh, in, case you, in case you couldn't figure out how to dispense those pellets. So homeopathic, so we're going to jump into these homeopathic remedies. So aconite is a really common remedy, and um, it's made from a plant called monk's head. And this is for um, when it's hard to fall asleep due to anxiety. And this is intense anxiety. It's you are having panic. You're very afraid. You are afraid of the world. You are on the verge of panic a lot. It's just very, very intense fear. So, and you can't fall asleep because you're, it's, you're very afraid. And it's usually happens with, when something very shocking has happened to you. And um, uh, it's different for everybody, right? So you might've got bad news or, um, lost a pet or lost a job or um, everybody, what frightens them is a little bit different, but it's acute insomnia that happens after um, shock, grief, or fright. You might notice an increased heart rate and they're just very restless. And so, and they might have a little bit of fear of the dark. So aconite is a really good remedy when you just have um, intense fear accompanying and you cannot sleep. Our Senecum album, one thing I want to tell you about the remedies that I'm presenting to you is they're all polycrusts. These are all remedies that are very well known. They're easy to find. They cover a lot of different diseases. So aconite can be used for, for um, many other things, and our Senecum can be used for many other things, but we're just talking about them um, as it relates to um, insomnia. So our Senecum album is a really good remedy when it's hard to fall asleep and hard to stay asleep and then you just really sleep very lightly so this is a very restless person restless they're just moving around it's that person that's constantly moving or tapping their finger or moving their their foot around they're just restless they just cannot sit still they're trying to keep their composure because they're generally a very fastidious person i'm very very controlled very regulated but they're very anxious at the same time. So this person must move around. They may pace the room. They may pace the room before they go to bed, or they may pace the room um, when they wake up in the middle of the night. So they hear every noise, they sleep very light. It's very difficult to fall back asleep. 
And they don't like to be alone. So because it, it frightens them to be alone. They feel better when someone is around them. And again, they're typically a very fastidious person. So this is a person there are no dishes in the sink. They would never go to the store in their pajamas. They are a very uh, 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 tightly regulated person. So kaffia, kaffia cruda is a great remedy. So here's a good example of like cures like that we that we can see in everyday life. So, um, so coffee, we think, oh, we're gonna make coffee because it keeps us awake and, and it gets us stolen and and but think about what you feel like when you've had too much coffee. You're just, oh my gosh, and um, uh, it's hard to contain yourself. You're you're very energetic and uh, lively. So when a person has a hard time falling asleep due to excitement, kaffia is a good remedy. So this is sleeplessness due to mental activity. But there, it's not anxiety. It's excitement. It's joy. It's they're excited. They're planning something. Maybe they're theorizing. Maybe they're working on something. It's a project that they're putting together. And they're so excited about it, they just cannot fall asleep. So that's kaffia. Gelsemium. So gelsemium is a great remedy. And this is um, used for many, many different things. Uh, a lot for fatigue, a lot for just severe prostration, just really, really tired. But um, this is for um, uh, when you, it's so hard to fall asleep because you're anticipating something. It's anticipatory anxiety. You're fearing that big test that's coming, that recital, that speech. Uh, you have that uh, that presentation you have to give in the boardroom and it's it stems from a fear of failure and um, and sometimes these people are just oh my goodness i i just can't, i can't i can't do this this is too uh, it's too much anxiety and they might also just be very tired and feel very weak weak they're very tired but they cannot fall asleep it's just uh, too much anticipation of what is to come Ignatia Amara is one of the most valuable remedies that we have. Um, it is a very well-used remedy. I couldn't, I love Ignatia. It's done many things. I know when my aunts passed, I used um, Ignatia and had great benefit from it. So this is when it is hard to fall asleep due to an emotional upset. So this is insomnia caused by grief, a, a loss, a great disappointment in love, a shock, or even an argument. Somebody that um, needs Ignatia might be very sensitive. Um, and so even, even a little argument might, to that person might just seem like a, a great big deal. So even just a little bit of reprimand or, or just a little bit of correction can upset a very sensitive person and then they might not be able to sleep this person might yawn or sigh frequently. They're just always like, <sighs> you know, you might, you might hear it now that I say that in somebody that might be going through, um, through a hard time. Um, but as they try to fall asleep, they might twitch awake. They're just, their arms and their legs twitch. A very common symptom for a nature person is just that lump in your throat. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, um, where it's just a sadness and you just have that lump in your throat, very weepy, um, can cry at the drop of the hat. And so it's, um, they're better when they're distracted, a little bit irritable, and, uh, and uh, they're silent. They're upset about something, but they're silent about it. But Ignatia is a great, is a great remedy for uh, when you can't sleep because you grieve. Califos. Califos is when it's hard to fall asleep even though you're tired. And this, this fatigue comes from a very long period of intense work, intense mental strain, or constant worrying. So I can think now, right? You, how many people have been in a constant state of worry the last six months or so? Am I going to keep my job? Is my spouse going to keep their job? 
you know, what is it, how is, how is our community being going to be affected? Have my children in their school? How's their education? There's lots of things to worry about. And then you, you worry for so long, or you have this intense work for so long that you just, it's hard to fall. It's very hard to fall asleep. Oftentimes the person that needs Cali, Cali Foss might have that emptiness that they feel in their stomach, but when they eat, they feel better. Generally a Cali Foss, um, a uh, person will also have headaches. They're just like, oh, tired and have a headache, can't fall asleep. Natrum mirror. So natrum mirror is also um, another one of those just great remedies. And uh, if you decide to build a kit, and um, this would be a great remedy to have. And this is also hard to fall asleep due to grief, but this presentation, the symptoms of a person that needs natural mirror is, is completely different. So this follows a significant loss, it's grief, but it's for the person that doesn't mourn and they have not cried, they, can't, they might not even be able to cry. So some people might say that, I'm, you know, they had this great loss and they're like, I can't even cry. I just can't get it out. That's, oh, I think, oh, that's your mirror. Um, but they'll cry when they're alone they prefer to be alone because they're worse with consolation. So if you've ever, you know, been talking to somebody and they, um, you're trying to comfort them, you might put your arm and, on their shoulder and they pull away. They do not want to be comforted. It makes them feel worse. <clears throat> That's really characteristic of natural mirror. Pretty irritable. And, and there's a sadness um, uh, to the person that needs natural mirror. And uh, they may crave salt. So we get down to our last two remedies. We have a quiz coming up. Um, so Nux Vomica is a really interesting remedy and it is a great remedy for that person that works hard and plays hard. So it's that person that can uh, work, 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 um, uh, go to happy hour, eat, eat all they want, drink all they want, um, but they go home, fall asleep, and then they're awake at three in the morning, and uh, it's very, very difficult um, to, to fall back asleep. Um, these are usually pretty intense people and, and irritable people. So fast drivers might, might reprimand somebody, a stranger that they don't know, don't really like I guess you could say uh, sometimes people say they don't suffer fools they're just really quick to be um, angered so that's a nux a very nuxy person and the last one we're going to talk about today is a remedy called roost tox and this is a pain a pain when you have pain and you can't sleep roost tox is a really valuable remedy uh, when treating arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis and so this remedy is very good for the person that once they sit down, they lay down or get into bed, that's when they start to hurt. That's when they start to ache. And their pain is always better with movement. And so uh, laying down and getting into bed is just don't even look forward to it. And usually they're intolerant to cold. So their pain is worse um, when, when it's cold out. So those are some very common remedies, um, polycrest remedies uh, that uh, are available. They're easy to find. You can find them at Sprouts or Whole Foods or wherever you find your, your, natural, your natural remedies. You can look at online retailers too. Um, but those are some really, really common remedies to help you sleep. So for anybody who's curious and wants to learn more, there's a great free e-book and it's called Beyond Flat Earth, An Essential Guide for the Homeopathic Patient. And it's written by a man named Dr. Dooley. And he has um, other editions, but this original edition is free. And it's a short read, and it really explains um, some of the foundational principles of um, homeopathy, why it works, how it works, and gives you a little insight on how to prescribe. And it really is a fun book if you are curious about learning more about homeopathy. If you are, I suggest getting some starter kits. And so some of the retailers will, if you just Google homeopathic uh, starter kit, you might start out with like a kit for um, 
you know, uh, first aid. And so there's some good remedies for bee stings and burns and bruises and aches and pains. Um, and you can try your hand at, um, at learning some of these remedies, but making sure that you have them on hand when you need them. Oftentimes I'll travel with my remedies um, because they're easy to take, they're small, and um, yeah, I, I just know uh, with the family that I have, somebody's gonna need something when we're, we're out of town. Um, they're single remedies, so like this one is Stramonium, um, but they also have uh, combination remedies where, like for example, if you go uh, and look for a cold and flu homeopathic remedy, they might have um, a combination where it would have maybe five or six of the most common remedies that cover cold and flu, and they're hoping, hmm, well, one of these should cover your symptoms and, and will help you uh, get feeling better. You choose the single remedies when you're more sure of what, it, what remedy it is that you need. Okay, so here we can have a, 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 just a mini quiz and you can just think, of, think about this in your mind or you can put it in the chat. Um, and I'll uh, scroll back through our remedies to give you, uh, give you a chance. So I had a patient come in today and she had uh, put this in as the reason for her visit. So recently had a husband of 33 years walk out on me and move in with girlfriend. I'm not sleeping well, depressed and anxious, not functioning well. So what remedy should we give her? So let me go back to our remedies and we had two really good grief remedies. So we had our Ignatia, and that was just hard to fall asleep due to emotional upset. And this is a person that's very sensitive um, and uh, more anxious, um, a little bit more irritable, and they cry all the time. They're very upset. Their emotions are on the surface. So that was one of our grief remedies for sleep, or it was a remedy for somebody whose grief was preventing them from sleep. And then the second one was our natromere. And that was hard to fall asleep, you know, as a remedy for hard to fall asleep due to grief. But this grief um, is different. It's more suppressed. And so instead of anxious, they're depressed. And they're, they're, their emotions are not on the surface. And they might find it very difficult to cry. And if they can cry, um, they would only cry when they were alone. So I just thought it was interesting uh, that I had that patient today. And, um, and so my, uh, my questions for her were a lot about, how, about her emotions, like, is she irritable? Is she weepy? Does she like to be consoled? Um, does she want to be left alone? Those types of things. And that, that led me um, uh, to pick a remedy. And I picked Nat Mir. And the reason I picked Nat Mir is she was very stoic. And she would only cry alone. And so we'll, we'll see how she does. I'll, I'll, we'll be back. Uh, uh, she'll come back in a couple weeks and we'll, and we'll check in with her. So here's my contact information. Again, the name of my practice is called On Being Well Naturopathic Medicine. I'm in South Gilbert, or sorry, South Chandler on Gilbert Road in Queen Creek. It's my office number, but my website has a lot of good information. If anybody um, uh, is interested in a consultation or they have a family member that needs to talk about something, wants to see if uh, naturopathic medicine or even myself is a good fit for them, I do free 15-minute uh, phone consults. And if I feel like I'm not the right person for that for you or or a, a loved one, I will always refer. And that concludes. That was amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. I have right here. Okay. <laughs> have some salt. So do you know that that works really great for uh, neuropathy and like leg cramps as well. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I, oh boy, with all the chemo I've had and 
Did you know I have rheumatoid? I have rheumatoid arthritis. No, I didn't know that. So interesting that you brought that up like five times. But I'm in remission right now, thankfully, because I've been taking really good care of myself. But I've had it since I was eight years old. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So good stuff. Wow. Wow. I learned so much. Well, I'm good. I'm glad. I love Epsom salt baths. I think they're amazing because they also do a little, it's a, it's a very gentle detox. And um, not one of us doesn't need a little bit of detoxing. And it's so gentle. Sometimes when we detox, we really notice it. It makes us very fatigued. We feel nauseous. We feel like we have the flu. We just don't feel good um, when we do too much detoxing. And so uh, that just gentle, just consistent detox is, is a really great way to go. Yeah, that's so much. I love the castor oil. I learned that. I I've been putting castor oil on my hair and eyelashes. And <laughs> I didn't know it was for pain. Where have I been? Oh, where have you been all my life? Oh, my goodness. Um, while you guys are asking questions, I want to draw the winner of the acupuncture. Yay. Acupuncture is super cool. I've done it a few times. And uh, whoever, whoever wins, just go on to the website, onbeingwell.com, and schedule the appointment. And uh, there's a little place you can make a comment or note and just let me know. Okay, you. Well, I'm going to say your first name just for confidentiality, and then um, I'll email you the link. You okay. Know, and I'll, call, I'll copy you or if you want. Okay. I'm not looking. I'm picking. All right. Here we go. Patricia. Woohoo! That's hey. fun. Patricia is right. my name. Is it? It's my mom's name. Oh, there you go. That's cool. All right. So let's see what questions we have. Um, Congratulations, Patricia. I'll send you an email. Uh, let's see here. Thank you. That was a great presentation. I find it very fascinating. What does the castor oil smell like? It doesn't smell like anything, does it? Yeah. Uh, it, it, is, it is really good for your hair. I, I can speak for it because I lost my hair twice to chemo, and it really does help your hair be thick and uh, healthy. It's tacky, so it's yeah. pretty sticky. Yeah. And you have to move past that and not think about it. Um, if you're going to put it on your body before you go to sleep, just put down a sheet or a towel that you don't care about. Don't sleep in your best jammies and, and slather it on. All right, someone asked, can we repeat the website again? It's onbeingwell.com. I want to type it in the... I'll put it in the chat. Okay, per perfect, and I'll look at the questions. There we go. Everybody loved it. I learned so much. I want to know if we can format this in a blog and then I can put it on my, my blog with your, a link to your site. Because sure. that, honestly, in the 20 years, I mean 30 years, I've been 35 years, I've been a respiratory therapist. Over 20 years I've been doing sleep. I've never heard of all of those homeopathic remedies. That was so amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, you're so welcome. I tried. I didn't want to give too few, and I didn't want to give too many. So hopefully, we got we got a little bit of each of the you know the main the main things that that we struggle with sleep. So yeah. All right. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'll let everyone go. Thank you, Dr. Garvin. Next week, right? Is it next week? We're talking. We're talking about mold, and so uh, mold is a very interesting subject, and it can interfere with sleep. There is mold in Arizona, so anytime you have a water-damaged building, um, you can have mold, and so mold uh, is very insidious. It's hard to hard to to know and look for it. Um, and and uh, uh, I've missed mold in the past. I will never miss mold again. And now that it is on my radar, so it's very it's a, it's a it's a funny topic, but one of my favorite things to treat. Well, you're helping a friend of mine right now who I'll remain nameless, but it's okay. uh, been really sick for a long time. And he is finally finding uh, relief with you. So I, I can't wait to hear the subject. So I didn't next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tomorrow at 1230, Sleep to Slender, if anybody wants to join us for that. Have a great evening. And thank you again, Dr. Garvin. Thank you. Bye, everyone.